morning, everyone. It is Coach Williams, Cassandra Williams of Cassandra Williams. Cassandra Williams Enterprise. We got to get this mouth working this morning. And we are here for the morning tea. After this broadcast, I hope something will be said um, that you feel equipped, you feel empowered, you feel encouraged, you have learned something, <clears throat> that you're educated to act, that you will be moved to action, reflection, um, application on today. And so what, who do, what do I do? I help wives um, those ladies that are married or those Esther's in waiting, I help them build the life of their dreams by understanding who they are and understanding what they bring to the table and are able to harness that and be the best version of themselves for their family. And so I help them build the life of their dreams and I help them live there. I help them, you know, deal with the things of their past, deal with the transition of going from singleness to marry. Um, so yeah, that's what I do. And so we are here today and we're talking about bad girls of the Bible, right? And so often I will look at the Bible as a wife. I will look at the Bible and I look to the Bible for encouragement. I look for the, to the Bible to show me how I'm supposed to act um, as a wife, you know, godly characteristics. But sometimes, y'all, we got to look at the Bible and it's got to be a mirror to say, mm -mm, don't do that. <laughs> don't do that. It's a place of self-evaluation where you kind of look at it and you're like, oh, I do some of that, right? And so as it is, we are celebrating all things women um, this month. We had an amazing day on Monday um, for International Women's Day. And so as we were, as I was preparing to, you know, really figure out what I wanted to do. Good morning, Takesha. Thanks for coming in, sis. Um, what, what we wanted to talk about, um, I wanted to not, you know, coach doesn't do the norm, right? There, there's certain times I have to disrupt a little bit. And so I didn't want to go with the traditional women of the Bible that we like to talk about. I wanted to talk to you about some ladies. So over the next few weeks, we're going to talk about some the bad girls of the Bible, right? And so today, um, I'm going to take some of y'all back. I need y'all to come. I need you to follow me back, though, but I'm going to take you back just for a minute. Bad girls of the Bible. Shake what your y'all you you can finish the sentence, right? You remember the song Shake What Your Mama Gave You? You know, you you remember, you you remember that song, right? And so in the Bible, there is a story, and I'm gonna tell you the story, right? There was a king that married his brother's wife. Y'all, there's some stuff in this here Bible, right? There was a there was a, a king, he married his brother's wife. So here we have the sister-in-law married to the brother-in-law. So that's that's a stink all in of itself, right? Then she has a daughter. So now her uncle is now her daddy, right? So she was born into this situation. She didn't ask for it. She was born into this particular situation. Well, there was a man of God by the name of John, John the Baptist. He was, you know, y'all know about John the Baptist, right? He was the forerunner of Jesus Christ. And so he was the man that was standing out there in the wilderness saying, prepare ye the way of the Lord. He was the one that was telling you, get right. Mm -hmm. Because there's someone that's coming. There's a savior that's coming. And so John the Baptist was telling the king, he was like, no, you're wrong, man. And the king respected him. So they had a dialogue. So he protected him. But see, his, his wife, his, his new wife. She, she didn't like John because she didn't like the fact that John was pointing out her truth. And you can find this story because I don't want y'all to think I'm crazy, right? You can find this story, Mark 6, 17 through 29. So she didn't want, she didn't like John talking to the king. She didn't like him telling him that what they were doing was wrong. She didn't like him telling them that they were living in sin and that God wasn't pleased. She didn't like that at all. But here's the thing, she couldn't do anything because she wasn't the king. But then what happens? There's a party, y'all. Y'all know what happens at parties, right? So he, here we are, we're at this party and they start to drinking and they start to feeling real good. And you know, the parties were a little different back then, okay? The men had their set apart. They were in one area. The women were in another area. The only women that got to come to these parties 
to be in the areas where the men were, were the ones that were going to dance or entertain them, right? So here we have this mother and her daughter hanging around the area where the men were. And so the king was like, hey, have her come in and dance for me. Does that sound familiar to some of you? Does that sound familiar? So have her come in. I want her to come in and I want her to dance for us. I, I want them to see her dance. And honey, this must have been some kind of dance because when she was done, he said, I, I'll give you anything you want up to half of my kingdom. Now, many of us remember those same words when Queen Esther went before the king to petition him for a nation, for her country, right? Because there was a plot to kill them and she had to go before the king. And so he said, Queen Esther, what do you want? He said, I'll give you anything up to, right? We also remember Vashti when she was called to come before the men. Vashti was like, Vashti got a bad rap, y'all. I'm just going to sidestep right here. Vashti got a bad rap because listen, he sent for her and he said, I want you to come and I want you to come, come into all these men wearing nothing but the crown. And Vashti was said, certainly not. She was like, I'm the queen. So now we see we have one person that has respect for herself and she did not come before them in an ungodly way, right? But then you have here, you have another young lady that has been groomed and is being trained. And she was sent in there to dance for these men. And there was a, there, listen, the, oh, she had a plan. Her mom had a plan. So when the daughter came out, she said, oh, mommy, mommy, guess what? He's going to give me anything that I want. He's going to give me anything. What, what should I ask for? You know what she at, told her to ask for? She said, I need you to go in there and I need you to ask him for John the Baptist's head on a platter. Now, if you know anything about the Bible, anytime that there's a decree from the king, he cannot take it back. So when he said, I'll give you anything you ask for up to, good morning, Christy, thanks for coming in. I'll give you anything you ask for up to half of my kingdom. He had made a vow. He had put his stamp of approval and everybody had heard it. So when she came back and asked for John the Baptist's head on a platter, guess what? He had to do it. And her mom's, and, and guess what he did? He sent an executioner. That's in verse 27. He sent an executioner and commanded him to his head to be brought to him in prison. So he beheaded him in prison. Because that wasn't the first time. Hey, Tina, thanks for coming in. That wasn't the first time he had put John. The, John the Baptist was put in jail all the time, right? And then he would let him out. And then he'd go on about his business doing the work of the Lord. But this time she had a plan. And she said, oh, I got you now. And guess what? John the Baptist was beheaded. And then the disciples went and got him and buried him in the tomb. So what am I saying to you guys today? There are people that are being trained to shake what their mama gave them, to get what they want, okay? There are some people out here that are willing to do whatever it takes. Okay, we're going to talk about it. We, it, to do whatever it takes to get their bills paid. They're willing to do whatever it takes to, to get a new car. It, they're willing to do whatever it takes to get what they need in their life. They're willing to do whatever it takes. Good morning, Kim. Good morning, Katina. Whatever it takes. And sometimes, y'all, we have found as wives and as people, we, we don't do it on that larger scale that we were like, now listen, most of us was not like going in dancing. You know, I mean, it's like the girls on the pole, right? Most of us are not doing that. But here's the thing. When, when you specifically be like, oh, okay, when you set up in your heart and in your mind, I'm going to get my husband home and I'm going to sleep with him because I want to do X, Y, and Z. And I know that he'll give me what I want if I give him some. Or on the flip side of that, you know that he going to want some. You know he going to want to have sex. With, we grown, okay? We know he going to want to have sex when he get home. And you be like, mm -mm, I got a headache because he didn't give you what you wanted. Uh-uh, I'm not going to give you none. You know, 
what you got to do. Y'all stop doing that. Stop making yourself, stop bringing yourself down. He shouldn't have to leave money on the table. I don't want money on the table. I want the card. I want to have access to it all. I don't want him to be leaving stuff for me. I don't want to have to manipulate and do all of that. that that's, not, that's not who I'm called to be as, as a wife. I don't have to manipulate my husband as long as I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing. Then guess what? He desires to please me. He desires to give me the things that I need. He, 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 he's like God. He wants to do exceedingly and abundantly above all I could ever ask or think. He wants to give me what I didn't ask for. But some of you are so busy shaking what your mama gave you. And single ladies, don't be doing that. Don't, don't sell yourself short. Hold on to what you have. Hold on to your integrity. Hold on to um, who God has created you to be. Hold on to that until the right one comes that will appreciate you. And you don't have to do all of that. We're talking about bad girls of the Bible. This lady, listen, she had married one brother. She did. She divorced him, married the other. I didn't say he died. I said she divorced him, married the other brother. And then asked for this man head and, can, and was training. Because here's the thing. When, what do you think? Because I, I want you not just to read the story, right? But I want you to put yourself inside the story. I want you to really look at it like this. What did this woman just teach her daughter to do? She went into a party with a room full of men. And she danced. They liked it. And they told her, I'll give you anything you want up to half the kingdom. And I asked for the head of a man. I asked you to murder somebody. Only thing John the Baptist was guilty of was telling the truth. The only thing he was guilty of was talking about your mama, y'all seeing your mama and him was not pleasing unto God. That's the only thing he was guilty of, but she didn't like it. What do you think she just taught this young girl? And her name was Salome. What do you just think that when she was born into adultery and incest, she was steeped in that? What do you think she taught her in that moment? By go having her go in and having her see that. Do you think she was teaching her how to be a godly wife? Do you think she was teaching her how to submit unto God? Do you, do, is, do you think that's what she was being taught? I, I don't see that. I, I don't see that that was what she was being taught. I thought, I'm thinking she was being taught to use her body to get what she wanted. And this wasn't somebody on the street teaching this to her. This was her mama. Train up a child in the way that they should go. So when they're old, they shall not depart from it. What did this lady just teach her daughter in that moment? Herodias just taught her daughter, Salome, how to use her body to manipulate men. In that one moment. Right. Takesha, yeah. She was teaching her how to use manipulation in her body to get it all. And here's the thing, guys. Some of us saw some things that wasn't right. Let's be honest. Can we talk about it? Can, can we talk about it this morning? So, some of us saw or some of you, so, somebody somewhere has seen where, you know what? It's rent time. So mama let boyfriend come over. Some of you saw light bill is due. And so, you know, there, there's a string of me, you know, mama talk about him and she put him out, but now bills are due. And so guess what? Now he gets to come over. What are you showing? What are you teaching? Your son or your daughter? What are you teaching them about? What are you teaching them? Because see, here's the thing. If you what you're teaching your son is you don't have to be faithful, you just have to provide. 
You just have to leave money. You don't have to give emotional support. You just have to leave the dollar on the table and you can get what you want. That's what you're teaching them. You're teaching your daughter. You know what, baby, use what you got. Shake what your mama gave. These are bad girls of the Bible. And ladies, that's not what we want to do. That's not who we want to be. That, that's not what we want. No, that's, that's not it. That, that's not what marriage is, is about. That's not what relationships are about. This one right here is not. Don't, don't do that. I want you to learn from her. Yes, I want you to learn from her. Their story is in the Bible for a reason. Because sometimes, y'all, it's a mirror to say, mm -mm, don't do that. Because I've done that. I, I've been there. I've never been to that extreme. Oh, but I've been that girl. I'm, I've been that chick. Single. <laughs> uh huh. And married. I was her. I was like, mm -mm, I got a headache. My body don't belong to me. What you mean you got a headache? <laughs> I didn't get my way. I didn't get what I wanted. So I had a headache. And it took some years for God to get that out of me that, you know, ma'am, you don't get to have a headache. <laughs> You don't get to manipulate. You don't get to use your body inside your marriage to control your husband. You don't get to do that. You don't get to do that. And so, you know what? I had to stop that. I, 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 I had to stop it. Because guess what? I did it when I was single. I did. And I went, I'm not saying I went around sleeping with everybody. That's not the case. But here's the thing. I knew what they wanted and I talked long enough to get what I needed without having to go all the way. I still was manipulating because they thought they could get it. If I give her this, then I'm going to get what I want. And so I would push that line all the way to get what I wanted and then I would run still the same still the same manipulation still the, still the same spirit and so ladies i don't i don't i don't want you to do that i don't want that to be your portion i don't want you to feel like you know that's how you have to get ahead that's how you have to make it happen look i just got to do i i just got to do what i got to do how about we get a, how about we start a business how about we become, you know do what we got to do on the right side of things. Stop manipulating. Stop hurting. Because see, here's the thing. When you start doing that, see, there are some women out here that will manipulate good men, y'all. Not all men are bad, okay? Like, so there are some rotten apples. They are, they are, okay? But here's the thing. Not all men are bad. Some people, some men, some good men have run into a Herodias. Some good men have ran into a Salome. Some good men have ran into the wrong woman and she changed all, she changed the game for him, right? And so when he got manipulated and he got, he got taken advantage of by her, then guess what happened? He was like, you know what? He did the same thing we do. Oh, I bet you, you won't get me like that again. And so now when he meets you, when he meets his good thing, then guess what happens? He don't know how to treat you because she messed him up. She manipulated him. She took him for everything that he had. And so now he thinks you're going to do it too. And you're like, boy, I ain't going to do that. And so every time he see that, every time you have a headache, then guess what? In his mind, he thinks it's Salome. Every time, you know, he, he's thinking... She going to do me just like this one. And so he runs for the hills. So it's not that he was a bad man. He met a bad, he, he met a bad girl and she messed him up. And some of us in another life, we was a bad girl. <laughs> we messed some people up. Be honest. Be honest. Tell the truth. Shame the devil today. Okay. It, we messed some people up. 
right, Takesha, let's not allow desperate times to make us desperate and manip manipulative. He makes an inner vow to never be, be good to a woman again. And then his wife, we spend years in, right, praying and fighting and pulling down those strongholds. So some of you, I just want to help you out today. I just want to help you. You got a good man, but guess what? He uh, Before he got you, his good thing, he, he had a Salome. He met somebody. He dated somebody. He had an encounter, entanglement, whatever you want to call it, with somebody that manipulated him. I had to pause and think, Lord, did I miss up some subjects? <laughs> I tried not to, Takesha. Sometimes people didn't understand why I wouldn't date them because I was like, mm -mm, you're a good guy. I'm not going to date you because uh, I ain't going to do right. I knew they weren't my husband. I knew they weren't the one that I could commit and submit to. So guess what? I didn't date them for that simple reason because I would have been Saloma. I would have been the one that was getting everything that I needed to get and then and knew it wasn't going anywhere. I didn't waste my time. Even when I was single, I, I didn't waste, I didn't waste my time. I knew within mm, maybe a few weeks. Some people I knew immediately. I was like, mm -mm, that ain't gonna work. <laughs> it ain't gonna work. I'm I'm not that girl, right? So, ladies and gentlemen <clears throat> that are listening to this broadcast, we are talking about bad girls of the Bible. Where we're coming out here and we're talking about women that are in the Bible that show us what not to do in our relationships. This girl walked in, shook what her mama gave her, and asked for the head of John the Baptist and got it. This dance was so good that she had him murder an innocent man. All the only thing he was guilty of was telling the truth. And let's just talk about that for a minute. Some of us get mad when we're crucified. Some of us get mad when we're attacked. Some of us get mad when they don't receive the truth of the matter. People don't want you coming and telling them that they doing, what they're doing is wrong. They're going to be mad. And so sometimes your persecution, sometimes your storm, sometimes the thing that you're going through is not because you're doing something wrong. Sometimes it's because you're doing something right. So y'all don't be out here shaking with your mama. Don't, don't be out here. The only person you should be doing that for is your husband and it's not to manipulate him. Okay. Okay. So I love y'all. If you would like to connect with me, you can go to www.thecassandrawilliams.com <clears throat> and check out. I have my books are there. My um, T-shirts are there. Everything there is to know about me is right there. If you are a married lady or a lady in waiting, Esther's in waiting, you can connect with me at www.wisewisebuild.com. We are in the midst of our Superman challenge right now. You can go there and find out all the information um, about that. Um, we are also beginning, we will start on April the 13th. We are having our first group coaching whoop, whoop, for the year where you get to go five weeks, you get to lock in five weeks. You get me all to yourself for five whole weeks. You and a few of your sisters are going to come into the room and we're going to really talk about it, how we can be strong, we can be independent. And yep, we can still be submissive. We can be strong. We can be independent and we can be submissive. Sis, submission is your superpower. It's not a bad word. It's your superpower. So if you're interested in that, go to www.wisewisebuild.com. I will be out here on Wednesdays and Fridays for the rest of the month of March, where we will be talking about bad girls of the Bible. And today we have been talking about Herodias and Salome um, from Mark 6. Let me put that scripture back up for y'all. Mark 6, 17 through 29. 
where she shook what her mama gave her, honey, and she got the head of a man. Okay? So we're not going to be doing that. We're not going to be out here in these streets doing that, right? We're going to be godly women that God, the women that God has created us to do. So today, I want you to go out there. I want you to be great. I want you to show up in the earth unapologetically, and I want you to be authentically you. But before that, I want you to go in there and I want you to do some self-evaluation. Make sure you're not being manipulative. We are not going to walk in manipulation, okay? You don't have to manipulate to get what you want. You want to, because guess what? If you manipulate to get it, you got to keep manipulating to keep it. I want to God to make me rich and add no sorrow with it. I want to be rich in the love of my husband. I want to be rich in joy. I want to be rich in peace. I want to be able to lay my head down at night and go to sleep. Okay. I don't want to have to be looking over my shoulder, being worried about what I had to do. I don't want to have to demean myself, right? To get anything. I want to be able to get it and hold my head high. So do your inventory today. Make sure there are no areas where you are being manipulative. Okay. So no, you don't shake what your mama gave you, but you be crying. Stop all that. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Stop using your tears to manipulate. Okay. We're just not going to manipulate. We're just not going to be her. We're not going to be that girl. Okay. I love y'all. Okay. But go out there and be great because even on your worst day, even on your day three, your day four, where you're like, man, I'm just getting it together to someone that is a number one or on a zero and ain't got started yet. Girl, you are killing the game. You are 10. But what are you showing them? Where are you leading them? Are you being like Herodias and Salome or are you leaving, leading them to the father? I love you guys. Have an amazing day. I hope you guys are enjoying. I hope you enjoyed today. Let me know. This is a little different, right? This is a little different, but I'm having fun with it. Um, so let me know how you like this topic, bad girls of the Bible. Thank you to my replay viewers. Thank y'all. Thank y'all for listening to in its entirety. Let me know your thoughts about bad girls of the Bible. So I love you guys to life. Have an amazing rest of your day. And I'll see you guys over here on Facebook on Friday. Bye.